Okay, guys, you're welcome to our class again this morning. In this particular experiment, we are continuing with our electricity experiment and um, involving light bulbs. Recall that in our last video, we, we talked about the effect of um, a light, a filament bulb in a circuit. Now, in this particular experiment, as you see the, the diagram on the screen, we are going to connect this particular setup or components that we have here according to the way it is in the setup. The apparatus we have for this particular experiment is the ammeter. We have a 0 to 5 ammeter, as you can see here. We also have a 0 to 5 volt meter. We have a 4.5 um, volt battery. We have a filament lamp here, and then a key or switch, a jockey, and a potentiometer. So, the first instruction we are given is that we should find the EMF of the battery um, that we are using for this particular experiment. And to achieve that, we are going to connect the battery straight to the terminals of the voltmeter and then measure out the EMF of the battery, which we have already connected, as you can see. We have connected the battery to the voltmeter, so we are now going to get the EMF. So, if we try to determine the EMF, you will read with me here at eye level that the EMF is at 4.7. So the EMF of the cell we have, although there are three 1.5 batteries each, you can see here, but the EMF is reading 4.7. So we need this information and we're going to note that the EMF of the cell we're using as 4.7 volts and then proceed with the experiment. So what we're going to do quickly would be to connect the circuit as it is according to the diagram. And once we do that, we would now begin to take our readings. Recall that from the diagram you have seen that the key is connected from the upper part um, to, the, to the left end of the potentiometer. Then the cell is connected to the upper part also in series with the key. So I'm going to quickly join up the cell. Let's arrange our circuit the way it's supposed to be. So the key and the cell are in series. Um, it's going to be connected to the other end, to the right end of the potentiometer. While the ammeter and the voltmeter are connected in parallel. So I'm going to join them in parallel to this end of the potentiometer, to the left end of the potentiometer. So this is how it's going to be there in parallel. And then the ammeter will be connected in series with the light bulb. So I'm going to keep it here and co connect the ammeter in series with the light bulb. Then the voltmeter will now be conjoined with the other end of the light bulb in parallel, which will now be connected to the jockey to complete the circuit on the resistance wire. So that is what the drawing is, and I'm going to quickly connect it that way, and then we can proceed with taking our readings. So to confirm our connection, you can see the series connection of the key with the battery from the upper path of the potentiometer and then the parallel connection of the ammeter and the voltmeter to the left, and then, then the series connection of the ammeter with the light bulb, and then the parallel con connection of the left arm of the voltmeter and the parallel in series with the light bulb to the connected to the jockey. So the jockey will tap um, the potentiometer wire to make the circuit uh, a closed circuit. So, First of all, you have to now take note of your zero error in reading your ammeter and your voltmeter if there is. And because it's a standard procedure, ensure that there is tight connection. And while taking readings on the potentiometer, avoid any form of parallax error. Do not scrape the jockey on top of the potentiometer wire. Simply tap it on top of the needed uh, positions. So with the procedure already on the screen, which you have read, we will now proceed. We have determined the EMF of the cell to be 4.7 volts. So with the instruction, we are meant to tap the jockey at 10 cm and note the voltmeter and ammeter reading and then record that. Okay, so to proceed now, we are going to be tapping the jockey at the 10 cm. So once we do this at 10, we will take note of the voltmeter reading. You can see the voltmeter reading is 0 0.35 if you want to read it at eye level avoiding parallax error 0 0.35 as you can see it's just in between why the ammeter reading the ammeter reading is just a little bit above this is 0 0.05 0 
0 0.05. So I will record that, then we'll proceed to 20. All right, so we'll proceed to the next one, which is X20. So we'll tap 20 here. We'll check what will be the reading on the voltmeter. This is 0 0.55, as you can see here. And then here, we have it still at the same position at 0 0.05. We'll record what we have. Notice that at this point, the lamp, the bulb is not still glowing. So we'll find out what will happen as we proceed in length. So we go on again to the next, which is 30. We have 30 here. Let us see what will happen. So here is point 30. I'll tap here at point 30. So see what the voltmeter will give us. This is 0 0.75, as you can see here. While the ammeter, ammeter is reading 0 0.15, as you can see, 0 0.15 amperes for 0 0.30, which is where we are. So this is the voltmeter 0 0.75. So we're going to record that and then proceed to 0.40. So here we have 0.40, we'll tap 0.40. So let's see what will be our voltmeter reading. So see our voltmeter reading is at 0 0.9, as you can see here. So let's check our ammeter to see what the reading is. So here is our ammeter at 0 0.2. Remember that this one is at 0 0.9. That's the voltmeter reading, 0 0.9. And that's at 0 0.40. So we're going to record this and proceed. So we'll proceed to point 0.50. Here is point 0.50. So we'll tap point 0.50 as we have it here. So, so this is what we have for 50. You see, this is 1.05. 1.05 for point 0.50. That is the voltmeter reading. Or approximately 1.1, 1.05 for point 0.50. So we'll find out what the ammeter reading is now. So here is the ammeter reading 0 0.3 ammeter reading is 0 0.3 approximately for this is 0 0.50 as you can see it here so we we'll proceed to 0 0.60 okay so here is um the last one which is the number 60 so we'll tap 60 here as you can see so we'll now read the voltmeter and find out what will be the voltmeter reading so let's see what the voltmeter reads this is voltmeter reading is one point. Okay, that's actually approximately one point two, but that's one point one five as we have here, and then the um, ammeter is zero point four as you see here. So we're um, this is our last reading. Now, if we keep increasing this, we'll notice that at a point the lamp would glow. So meaning that the intensity of the light um, increases as the length s increases so this is the practical aspect of this particular experiment we are going to uh, tabulate our readings and then come up with the theory and um, the graph and the slope to explain the whole procedure please stay tuned okay guys so we've done the compilation of our table and here is the representation of what we have done or the values and data we have gotten from our experiment. You can see from this table that the constant value of the length of the constant time wire, which is represented X in the diagram um, as given to us, is represented in centimeters, which is what we use, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And then our readings, according to the experiment that is the voltmeter reading and the ammeter reading all are also captured remember that one of the standard rules is that you record to the degree or the reading accuracy of that particular measuring instrument you are safe if you can add um, some decimal places but there's a limit there's a particular limit 0 0.1 for a meter room now the voltmeter reading the ammeter reading are both captured and then the, in the question, they asked us to find the logarithm of the, um, the ammeter reading and that of the voltmeter reading. All those we punched, and then their values are also captured on the table. 
With this composite table now and the values that we've gathered, the question says that we should plot a graph of log i on the vertical axis and log v on the horizontal axis. And then after that, we will now be able to determine the slope and the intercept on the vertical axis. Of course, looking at these values of log i and log v, you can see that there are negative signs. So you should be careful when you are trying to plot the graph. So representing this data in a graph sheet, this is what it, it looks like here. You can see that a graph of log i and log v, in order to represent it well, you have to change the position in order to capture the negative sign um, of the values and the data we collected. So plotting that we have a straight line that makes an intercept with the, horizon, the vertical axis and then um, trying to deduce our slope we have the slope to be the change in the logarithm of i to that of the logarithm of v and by the time we took our, our readings uh, from the maximum and minimum values for both horizontal and vertical we got our slope value to be 1.6 so it's a positive value and then reading of the intercepts of um on the vertical axis we got that as you can see from the graph 0 0.6 um as the intercept so from this our slope we can actually deduce the resistance that the light bulb and of course the constant turn wire offered in the circuit or to the flow of current how can we do that now you know that from ohm's law that v is equal to ir that is the formula for calculating ohm's law where v is the potential difference and i is the current and then r is the resistance if we make i subject formula we'll get that i is equal to the inverse of r times v now finding the logarithm of both sides would have that log i is equal to log inverse of r times log v now remember that in the graph we plotted log i against log v log i in, uh, as the at the vertical axis and log v at the horizontal axis meaning that our slope value will be equivalent to log inverse of r now our slope value is 1.6 meaning that log inverse of r is equal to 1.6 solving log uh, logarithmically we have that a 10 inverse of 1.6 is equal to 1 over r that's inverse of r and then making r subject of formula would get um, 1 over 39.81 which would eventually give us 0 0.025 ohm so it means that this value of resistance is what the light bulb offered in the circuit so with this we've been able to deduce our resistance so going forward the basic precautions that we took in the experiment had already been stated in the course of the experiment i said you must have to ensure clean terminals you must have to avoid parallax error in reading the voltmeter and ammeter you must also avoid zero error in reading the voltmeter and ammeter ensure tight connection when you are connecting and then avoid sliding the key or the jockey rather on the potentiometer and then open the key when you are not taking any reading to ensure that the current is not being drained from the circuit now in this particular question they asked us how is the brightness of the bulb affected as s increases i already answered this question the conduct of the experiment x increases as s increases voltage and current also increases through the bulb so the implication of that is that since voltage and current also increases, the brightness would increase. You saw it in the experiment as we were increasing the length of the wire, the voltage and the current from our table, you can see it was always increasing. So, and at a point I told you the brightness of the bulb became brighter. So it also increases. So that is actually what happens as the brightness increases. So. They now asked us to state some of the devices that do not obey Ohm's law. Remember, some 
conductors obey Ohm's law and are called ohmic conductors, while some do not obey Ohm's law and we call them non-ohmic conductors. Many, many, many of them do not obey Ohm's law. We have the diodes, the transistors, the capacitors, the thermistors, filament bulbs, vacuum tubes, rectifiers, thyristors, and inductors, and so many other devices that do not obey Ohm's law. Most conductors of electricity are they obey Ohm's law. Talk about copper, talk about aluminum and all those metals that you know that are very good conductors of electricity. So these are some of the questions that were asked in this particular experiment and I believe that our summary would be of help to you. Please do well to always subscribe to our channel, like and share our videos to your friends and colleagues. Until next time, please stay tuned. God bless you.